hello and welcome to part three of this week's lecture. In this lecture, we are going to look at viscosity in more detail and what are the implications of uh, viscosity in terms of uh, fluid flow. Okay. So let's start by defining viscosity that it is the property of fluid by which it resists motion. And if you imagine uh, a fluid in the form of uh, layers, for, for example, you have two layers of fluid, and these two layers are moving next to each other, and there is a form of friction between these two layers. And this friction is what we call viscosity uh, uh, of the fluid. Okay? So, due to this uh, friction between the fluid particles on molecular level, okay? And the uh, friction means that some of the energy between uh, these layers is actually lost in terms of heat. So it means that uh, if the fluid is flowing in a pipe, there will be some of the energy converted into heat. Okay. And uh, the second part is resist the motion means that you need to force to keep it continuous flowing. So it means that if you want a fluid to move, from one location to another location, you need to supply a pump, okay, to move it, okay. And with, once you stop the the pump, the fluid will not move in the pipe as well because there is friction, and after some time, it will just stop. And here is a short video uh, to to uh, try to help you understand the the effect of viscosity in terms of fluids. And uh, here you can see. Let me play it. So here you have a range of fluids with different viscosity and the, there is a cup and the fluid is flowing under the effect of gravity. And you, as you can see, for the first three fluids in a time of 0 to 30 weeks roughly, you are able to get some form of flow. Okay, And 30 weeks is a long time. While for the last two fluids, you don't even get any flow at all even after 50 weeks of experiment okay and that shows you that the first three fluids have much lower viscosity uh, compared to the the last two fluids because of the low viscosity these fluids are easy to deform or they have less friction uh, in um, uh, for the fluid particles to move in the flow direction while for these last two fluids the friction is so large between the layers that they are not even coming out of the cup, okay? So again, if we look at uh, a, a layer analogy, so for example, you have these two metal plates and in between two plates, you have a fluid and we have actually um, uh, kind of divided this fluid in the form of layers. So the bottom plate is stationary and the top plate is moving at a velocity V. And if you see that the layer that is adjacent to the bottom plate is also stationary, it means that it also has velocity zero. But as you go away from this stationary plate, you have increase in velocity of each layer uh, in the in the uh, in the for example upward direction. Okay, and at the top layer you will have the same velocity as the velocity of the plate. Okay, and uh, now if Try to uh, uh, understand the concept of friction or, or viscosity here. So you have this is the fast moving layer, and then below this fast moving layer, you have a slow moving layer. And because this layer is slower than the upper layer, it's kind of trying to drag it or trying to slow it down as well. Okay, so this effect of this drag or friction, let's call it, is what we call uh, viscosity. Okay, I hope it is now a bit more clear what actually viscosity is in terms of uh, friction between the layers. So based on the viscosity of the fluid, we can divide uh, fluids into ideal and real fluids. So in form of ideal fluids, uh, it means that it does not take into account the viscosity of the system. It means that we assume that there is no friction between the layers and as such all layers will move at same velocity because there is no friction so there is no uh, dissipa dissipation uh, effect okay uh, but these ideal fluids we only use uh, for for example when we are kind of trying to 
uh, understand a system and we don't want to under, uh, uh, kind of consider the effect of viscosity. So we assume the fluid is ideal and then we ignore the effect of viscosity. Okay. But in reality, most of the equations that we develop, we develop uh, con considering the viscosity. It means that we, we consider that after a certain point, uh, the velocity will start to change and it is going to increase uh, from, from the wall towards the center of the pipe, okay, as we saw in lecture part two. And uh, these uh, viscosity, they have uh, important effect in, in the fluid flow. So it causes friction between the fluid particles and hence it slows the, the fluid layers. And as a result, we get a velocity profile, okay? And this velocity profile is very important because when we are trying to calculate the flow rate of the system, that is actually velocity times area. So this velocity profile is what we get this velocity from, okay? So uh, how much amount of fluid you can transfer in a pipe depends on what kind of velocity profile you have uh, of the fluid in that system, okay? So now let's look at uh, viscosity in a more mathematical way. And this is something we also looked at in lecture one when we define viscosity. And again, you have a system, uh, you have two plates, and in between these two plates, you have a fluid body. The bottom plate is not moving. It means that the, 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 visco the velocity is zero, and the top uh, plate is moving with a velocity u, for example, okay? And in between these two uh, plates, you have the fluid, and so at point one, uh, the layer, so if you again consider this fluid in the form of layers, yeah? So the layer or the point that is uh, adjacent to the wall, uh, the velocity is going to be zero, and that is the point here. But as you move away from the plate, the velocity of uh, the layers are increasing. So for example, if you have u1 here, and u2 here, and you have u3 here, so we can write that u3, is actually greater than u2 and is greater than u1 okay and as such very easily we can see that the velocity is changing as we are moving in the y direction okay and as such we can write that the change in velocity uh, with respect to y direction and this quantity mathematically what we call velocity profile Okay, that is the change in velocity with respect to y direction. Okay, so um, and the experimentally, um, uh, Reynolds, for example, observed that the force that is uh, um, exerted by these fluid layers uh, is proportional to area times u over y, and that it was the uh, purely experimental observation when he was doing all these Reynolds uh, experiments that I explained in part two of this lecture. And it shows that the velocity is proportional to area times u over y, and u over y is actually velocity gradient as I showed you here, okay? So we can write this from this uh, experimental observation that uh, tau is equal to f over a tan, so A is the tangential area, and again, F is the force. And if we divide force with the area, we get the shear force between different layers of the fluid, okay? And uh, in your handbook, uh, in your course handbook, you can see a much more detailed uh, mathematical proof of this, this, uh, uh, this law of viscosity. But I think this, that is not important because it is purely a mathematical derivation. And uh, so I try to give you this more simple definition here. So it will, uh, the, the, if you are interested in to see the mathematical proof of this equation, please have a look at your notes, but it is not important from exam point of view, okay? So uh, Reynolds also observed that this shear rate, or, or sorry, the shear stress is proportional to the shear strain rate. 
also known as the velocity gradient it means that the more shear uh, uh, more is the shear stress the more deformation you get or the more uh, velocity gradient you develop okay so these two are proportional to each other okay so we can write from this uh, observation that um, shear stress is proportional to velocity gradient that is partially over partial y and we can replace this proportionality with a constant at that constant is the viscosity of the system okay so what this law of uh, newton's law of viscosity states that the shear stress is proportional to uh, shear rate and it means that the more shear you apply the more deformation or the more velocity gradient you create but what is important here that if you plot this graph this relation in the form of a graph so you can see that the the shear stress increase the shear rate but the viscosity of the system uh, remains constant okay so it means that the viscosity of your system is independent of the amount of shear you are applying okay it means that the shear, the viscosity is not changing uh, with uh, by increasing the shear stress because uh, the shear rate is also going to increase and this all is going to make the viscosity constant again okay so these systems where the viscosity is not a function of shear rate or where the viscosity is constant uh, is what we call newtonian systems okay it's, it's not written here but it's called newtonian systems uh, in which the viscosity is not a function of uh, shear rate okay and uh, again from first lecture we know the the units of viscosity that is uh, newton second per meter square or we have pascal second we have some other important units of viscosity as well centipoise that you might see and in si units we can write it as one pascal second okay and here you have a chart of viscosity uh, there are different fluids and these are the values of uh, viscosity just to give you uh, uh, a perception of how different fluids have uh, different viscosity okay uh, so we discussed the newtonian fluids where the viscosity is independent of the shear stress and in addition to uh, newtonian fluids we have other fluids as well they where actually viscosity is a function of shear rate okay so we have first we have newtonian fluids where uh, again the viscosity is independent of shear stress or is constant we have uh, fluids that are called shear thinning where viscosity decreases with with shear stress okay it means that the more amount of shear stress you apply the easier it gets for the fluid to flow and that is why it's called shear thinning uh, uh, fluids um, opposite to that we have shear thickening fluids that are the fluids where the viscosity increases as you increase the shear stress okay and for example one example of this uh, shear uh, thickening uh, fluids are actually cornstarch you might have seen many videos of people working on cornstarch uh, solution and that is possible because of this shear thickening effect that the more shear stress you apply the the more solid the material gets okay and then we have uh, bingham plastic fluids that is the example of a ketchup for example that it needs a certain value of shear stress before it starts to flow like a newtonian fluid okay so here the viscosity is again constant but before it starts to flow you need a certain value of shear stress uh, to apply okay and as i said the example is ketchup that you try to take it out but once you hit it from the back it starts to flow just like a normal fluid okay so for these uh, fluids where the viscosity is a function of shear stress we can write a more generalized form here so for example where a and b and n are constants and what it shows you that the viscosity is uh, not constant anymore and you need a different kind of relation 
between shear um, rate or velocity gradient to the shear stress okay and this equation is called power law okay so n is uh, a dictation of if the velocity is increasing or decreasing okay so again uh, you don't need to uh, need a proof of this equation um, uh, just try to understand that the velocity the viscosity sorry is now a function of shear stress here okay so this term a plus b is what gives you equivalent to a viscosity okay that was for the newtonian case for example so what we saw till now that the viscosity is a really important factor and uh, the most important implication of viscosity is that it dictates what flow region the flow is going to be and if you remember Reynolds number from part uh, 2 so that is d u rho over viscosity so the value of viscosity dictates that if the fluid is going to be in laminar region transition region or turbulent region and that indirectly affect what the velocity profile is going to be okay and why velocity profile is important again because it determines uh, what is the amount of fluid that you are going to transfer because the flow rate depend on velocity So if you change velocity profile the flow rate will change And the second important effect is that Because if the um, is the energy loss, okay? So viscosity as I said is a form of friction between the layers So the higher the velocity viscosity you have the more energy you are going to lose uh, in form of friction or in form of heat so it means that uh, to move a fluid with lower velocity, uh, lower, sorry, to move a fluid with lower viscosity, you need uh, much less force. So, for example, this is um, T1, for example, and uh, and in the second case where you have much higher value of viscosity, so your force is going to be also quite large. Okay, so you need to provide much higher force for a more viscous fluid compared to a less viscous fluid to move it in the system. Okay, so that is all for part three of this uh, week's lecture. And uh, in the next lecture, we will look at formulations to calculate the velocity profile and flow rates, for example, for a fully developed laminar flow. Okay, see you in the next section.